Now, just to correct the record, I am never greased up. You will see sweat, but I am never wearing any kind of oil or anything like that when I work out. Governor suggested otherwise. Nothing but respect. Not true. It's, it's, it's okay. You can deny it. It is fine. I mean, later on, we can talk about it privately, about what kind of oil you used and all that stuff. It was coconut oil, I was told. But anyway, let, let's forget That's about not- it. Come on, Chris. Everyone knows you put the oil on after the workout. (laughs) Happy Tuesday, everyone. It is Tuesday, right? Yeah. (laughs) Cat is recuperating after a minor commuting accident. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. (laughs) That wasn't really her. Anyway, in for her is Emily Campagno, who was just on The Five recently. Hi, you guys. Happy Friday. We're so excited to be here on The Five. Me and Jessica and Jesse and Shannon and Greg, they will all be here any minute, and we'll see you guys at Five. (laughs) (laughs) What's so funny? All right, so you remember the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue? It's the one that had as about much to do with sports as I do. I was more of a better homes and gardens kind of guy. I wasn't the best at landing a free throw, but damn, I could landscape a backyard in more ways than one, Chadwick. <laughs> <laughs> I bring up that old magazine because like Hunter Biden, it's now trying hard to change. For their 2021 swimsuit edition, they featured three stars on the cover, a tennis pro, Naomi Osaka, a rapper, Megan Thee Stallion, and trans activist, Lena Bloom. The magazine has ticked more boxes than a meth head doing his SATs. But damn, that's going to confuse the 90-year-olds who still subscribe to the once legendary magazine. But it's perfect, for it's designed as outrage theater for the right and noble approval seeking from the left. And both work hand-in-hand to help Sports Illustrated prop up their brand like the corpse in Weekend at Bernie's. But because the desperation for relevance is so obvious... The consumer shrugs. People know a participation trophy when they see one. While their peers in the media applaud their enlightened editorial perspective, the average guy and gal rolls their eyes, their disbelieving eyes. It's happening everywhere. Sports, politics, life in general. Everything's woke. It's no longer about reality. It's the perception of inclusion and exclusion that changes the definition of reality. And any resistance is seen as bigoted, hateful, and reactionary. Now, I get the tennis pro. But like the equipment she uses, the rest of this wokeism is a racket. Thank you. (laughs) Hence the connection between trans activism and Sports Illustrated, especially when the magazine ignores the elephant in the room, which is the impact of male to female trans athletes on female sports. The trans model cover protects them. But it's a fair question. Would she have been on the cover if she wasn't trans? But asking that question is like asking why a sports magazine cover would have swimsuits in the first place. I never understood this. I like to keep my general interests in me looking at half-naked women separate. I mean, imagine if popular mechanics had a swimsuit issue. (laughs) I mean, I wouldn't mind. I have a thing for plumbers and their ball cocks. That that controls the flow of water in a toilet tank, people. (laughs) Thank you. But thanks to the trans cover, the SI staff looks woke as opposed to a bunch of dirty old drooling editors. And it gets activists off your back really easily. It's like a shop owner spray painting, BLM, we're with you, on the plywood protecting their window. Appear woke and the Twitter mob might let you survive. Otherwise, they'll topple you like a statue of Abe Lincoln. The women's magazines got this early on, putting plus-size models on their covers. They did this because they knew for decades their obsession with rail-thin mannequins led to eating disorders. All the editors are still obsessed over being thin, but now they use heavier models as a shameless stab at enlightenment. Obesity has its own health risks, but bring that up, shame on you for fat shaming. It's not about the needs of the readers or viewers anyway. The media is the only industry that holds barely disguised contempt for their customers. They're no different than Chinese fentanyl producers, cell phone companies, and any government employee that is supposed to help you. It's now about creating a virtue signaling stew to placate terrified advertisers. Sports Illustrated is just one example of an effort to blend in in order to escape the wrath. Victoria's Secret dropped their iconic angels, calling them unattainable, 
which is the whole point of supermodels. <laughs> they aren't supposed to be attainable like you and me, or else they would be attainable. <laughs> it's the true symbol of inequality. The real discrimination in life is between levels of physical appeal, not race. But that was the point of the angels, right? They were quite literally out of this world. But now we want women grounded in real life, Victoria's Secret says. So who are their new models? Well, not models, it's their brand ambassadors. And they are soccer player Megan Rapinoe, transgender model Valentina Sampio, and plus size model Paloma L. Seltzer, among a few others. So is that grounded in real life? Maybe, I have no idea. I'm a stone cold super freak. <laughs> Try me. And I love being grounded in real life. But if you mean it, then just skip the teddies and sell sweatpants. Don't sell me extensive, expensive lingerie that's grounded in reality. If I want that, I'll rummage through Kilmeade's office. <laughs> oh, stuff he has is disgusting. <sighs> Don't forget, once the woke police take over every aspect of what we consume, there's no telling where it'll stop. You can almost picture it. Back here again, what is it this time, huh? What is it this time? Did you or did you not tweet out, I wish the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue stayed the same. <clears throat> What's so wrong with enjoying women in swimsuits? Yeah, I said that. That's sexist and objectifying. Next you'll be telling us you enjoy reading about sports coverage. Let me tell you something, we went through your recycling bin, perhaps you'd care to explain this. <laughs> oh my God, well, I like cars. Like cars? Fewer than 3% of the vehicles in here are electric. Don't you care about global warming? Guys, come on. Jeez. And also, maybe you'd care to explain this. Oh my God, give me a break. It's my wife's magazine. She's a woman. Your wife is a woman? That's very gender binary. And you know damn well that women have not had their day. <laughs> and maybe you'd like to explain this. What, people? People, as in you people. <laughs> oh, thank God you're here. I object. Ray ipso loquitur habeas corpus, subpoena, affidavit, plead the fifth, beyond a reasonable doubt. Why? Why do you let them bring you here all the time? Come on, <laughs> let's get out of here. I knew you weren't a real lawyer. But in today's culture, as seen through the distorted lens of the media, everything old is bad and everything woke is good. I'd say keep it going. It's time to normalize everything we once considered impossible. I always wanted to be on the cover of Sports <laughs> Illustrated. <laughs> Maybe it's my time. Ladies, welcome tonight's guest. She's the vegan who's got a beef with everyone. Fox Business Network anchor, J.K. McDowell. When the press needs a right turn, he grabs the wheel. Right turn strategies, President Chris Barron. He's burned more bridges than General Sherman. Outspoken editor-in-chief, Chadwick Moore. Now, when this former cheerleader says 2468, it's me who she appreciates. Outnumbered co-host, Emily Campagno. <laughs> Dagan, why can't straight, cis-normative males like me be on the cover of the swimsuit issue? I think I would look gay, gay great in a bikini or a mankini. I do. I've seen the selfies that you take in your yeah. private time. <laughs> yes. Uh, I love how... <laughs> Sports Illustrated is moving into this century, but their idea of progress is, well, a woman in a bathing suit standing on the beach. Right. On her knees in the sand with her legs spread. Yes. You know, we're <laughs> rising up, except we're not because we're on all fours with our ass stuck up in the air. <laughs> there was actually, listen, I went through the photos in this Sports Illustrated, and it's true, so women can rule the world, except if we're covered in lotion and have sand in our crack. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you talked about, it, at least Sports Illustrated still has all these, what did you call them, unattainable models right. in, on the inside pages. I will say that bravery is wearing a bathing suit that is laid, a bikini that's laced across the middle and not having your, like, kidney fat hanging <laughs> over the laces. So, kudos. That is the true hero when you think about it. I don't know. Chadwick, it's kind of funny watching companies kind of fall over themselves to blend. Like, they're covering their asses by trying to look like they're the most enlightened, but it's it just, do they believe it? 
Or are they? <laughs> oh, good question. Uh, we, we, I think the jury's still out if they believe it or not. If they're still gauging if it's good for business. Yeah. You know, uh, just sometimes it is. And sometimes, I think you're right that, that with the Sports Illustrated, well, here we are talking about Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. And they did this again a few, uh, previously a few years ago, and they put a fat person, a fat woman on the, in the sprint suit issue. Excuse me, plus size. Excuse, uh, a person of obesity yes. on, on the cover. But yeah, we're talking about the swimsuit issue, which was something that, you know, maybe should have gone away when, <laughs> with the internet. Yes. Uh, but it's good for business. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That seems like something that should have been killed by the internet since it's killed everything else, including like three of my jobs. I mean, I'd, if right. I told you I worked for Maxim, not everybody here would be like, what's that? Yeah, yeah. I remember Maxim. Do you, yeah, yeah. You know, I was an editor of Maxim. That was one of the things that just kind of floated off into the ether along with Stuff Magazine. It was, the, mean, it was the internet and not you that killed Maxim? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some people will argue that I was, I was probably the killer. <laughs> What do you make of this trend, Chris? Well, one, I'd like to point out that you have two gay men on here to talk about the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, which I find entertaining. <laughs> yes. But I will opine <laughs> on it anyway. And you also have two women who identify as gay men. Yeah. <laughs> which, that's actually true. Is yeah. that because, <laughs> that's is that because you're true. stout? I say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what, I, what I thought was funny was they actually described the, the, the trans model as their first openly trans model. Mm -hmm. And my question was, have they had another like trans cover oh, that like wasn't openly trans. Like, should we going back through former SI models and asking them, is is there something you want to tell us? That was, like, that's, <laughs> that, like, I totally missed that. That's a very keen insight. That's, that's why I'm here. Keen that's insight. Keen, keen <laughs> insight. You're, but you're a crazy sports fan. I right? am. You're right. You're, I, which is why I don't read Sports Illustrated. Did you used to? Yeah, way back in the day when you had to get like information from USA Today or Sports Illustrated. Like all of those things are now irrelevant. And, yeah. and Chad was correct. Chad was right. We're talking about this, you know, the Sports Illustrated, which normally no one does because, frankly, Sports Illustrated's been dead for 15 years. See, I don't. Yeah. See, I disagree with the idea of media attention. I don't. I think they do this not to get any attention because the fear is that they will be called out for misogyny or sexism and what this is done what this does is it's it's pay, they paid the over over overpaid consultants they got the diversity they got all that stuff so that they don't make a ripple so that they can squeeze by and the advertisers don't get scared emily how are you so good thanks. it's so great to see you there <laughs> right so i have a question for you you were once an nfl cheerleader back what in the 70s right oh my God. yeah <laughs> <laughs> a little before that, yes. And Stabler used to hit on you. <laughs> the snake. Yeah, the snake. That's, um, you know, he got cool. that name, Dagan. You know, um... <laughs> Plumbing, would, plumbing, plumbing. He would, he would snake through the, the field, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. R.I.P. Um, I, here's my question. And it may not even be a question. Maybe it's an opinion. It seems to me that what they're trying to shut down is anything that kind of indulges the straight male gaze, right? It's like, it's more like... Uh, Anything that a straight guy is attracted to is kind of the problem. And isn't that going to happen with cheerleading in general? Because anything, like it, it's, that's going to be the next step. Or maybe it already is, and I've missed it. It's already been happening. So the Washington football team essentially just dismantled their cheerleading squad and has, before that, completely overhauled it to put on sort of different, more like tracksuit looking uniforms and the like. So the answer was essentially to, you feel more tempted by this and there are thus allegations of sexual harassment will be to extinguish the temptation. Mm -hmm. I think your point about this playing into the, the woke gods essentially to prevent there being the culture mob coming out of them is totally true. I mean, there, think about it, there are three covers here. Mm -hmm. They wanna make sure all the boxes are checked. Mm -hmm. And to the transgender point, Lena's not an athlete, mm -hmm. but there are in fact, a million transgender athletes out there. We've been seeing them not only through high school sports and the subject of a lot of legislation, but also at the Olympic level. So the fact that there are, are global you know, parameters set to that right now, but that's the one that they're going to choose because it's the safe play, because they're not actually getting into the fray Very smart of the sports yeah. realm. Point, because why didn't they actually go with the athlete, right? Hmm? There's huh? one reason That's why. why. Yeah, well, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> because the, 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 I said this briefly in the monologue, the, real, the, the most pervasive discrimination on Earth is something we all know. It goes back to natural selection. It's attraction and beauty. People that are lucky to be born with cheekbones go much further, no matter the race, than anybody else. 
which is why I'm very lucky. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.